Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world watching this video. I hope you're all doing brilliantly. My name's Nathan Carr and I'm the creator and author of The Home of Caribbean Football. I'm here today on Reggae Boys Commentary, invited on by my good friend Simon Preston to preview this year's edition of the Caribbean Cup, which is uh, scheduled to, to kick off next month from the 22nd to the 25th of June at Stade Pierre Alicaire in Fort de France, the capital of, uh, of Martinique. On the 22nd, we'll have the semi-finals, Jamaica against French Guyana and Curaçao against Martinique. And then three days later on the 25th, we'll have the third place match and the final, the grand finale, which will see the new 2017 Caribbean champions be crowned. But first of all, I want to focus on, on the first of those, of those semi-finals, Jamaica versus French Guyana. Now, the Reggae Boys are seeking their seventh Caribbean Cup title, which would put them just one away from rivals Trinidad and Tobago, who lead the way with, uh, with eight overall. Jamaica won the tournament in 1991, 1998, 2005, 2008, 2010, and most recently in 2014, when they beat Trinidad and Tobago 4-3 on spot kicks after a 1-1 draw after extra time. Winfred Schaefer, the German coach, was in charge uh, for the 2014 Caribbean Cup. And uh, since then, there's been a change in the management. Theodore Tapper Whitmore was appointed on an interim basis in October last year. Whitmore is the only person to have won the Caribbean Cup as a player in 1998 and 2005 and as a manager in 2005 eight as assistant to John Barnes and in his own right in 2010 when Jamaica uh, beat Guadeloupe on spot kicks to take the title uh, back then. So Whitmore is in charge and when he came in in October last year he came in at a time when Jamaica were just beginning their Caribbean Cup qualifying uh, campaign because they received a bye to the uh, to the third round. Um, they began by playing Guyana and um, they had a really bad start. They, they conceded two goals um, and at half time they were 2-0 down. Um, however, they, they scored two goals in the second half, um, one at the very death, um, and that forced extra time because in this season's Caribbean Cup, um, there, were, there were no draws. There had to be a winner. And in extra time, they scored two goals and they took the victory overall 4-2. But by no means was, was, was that plain sailing for them. Then due to Hurricane Matthew, they played their next game against Suriname in November. And again, that was not straightforward. I mean, they won one nil and kept a clean sheet. Um, but Damien Lowe, the centre-back, was sent off in the first half for a stamp on, on, on the opponent. Um, so he was sent off, given a red card. And that meant that the reggae boys had to play uh, all of the second half with just 10 men. But ultimately in football, you know, results are what matter. They got the two wins, Jamaica did, um, and that bought their ticket in the Caribbean Cup um, and, and the Gold Cup, which, which begins in, uh, in July. In terms of preparation, earlier this year, Jamaica played two friendlies, uh, the first of which was against the United States, and the second was uh, Honduras. They lost the first 1-0, um, pardon me, and then they, uh, they won against Honduras 1-0. The theme of uh, Red Strike Premier League and US-based players in the squad, that continued for the friendlies. Um, now, in the Caribbean Cup qualifiers, um, Jamaica used 17 players all together, and 11 of those um, were based um, in, with US clubs at the time. That's 65%. For the Caribbean Cup, it's going to be interesting to see the kind of squad. It hasn't been announced yet. The kind of squad that, that, that Tapper Whitmore will call up. Um, because you would imagine that quite a few of the local players will feature. Um, I mean, indeed, uh, uh, Whitmore has called up a local training squad um, ahead of the friendly against Peru on the 13th of June. So he's called up a, a local training squad and they're going to be in camp for uh, a couple of weeks. So to just, just to him to see, you know, who's capable of, 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 of playing uh, in the Caribbean Cup, um, who, who can make the cut, who can't. The European-based players, well, most of them have finished their seasons. I mean, you look at Joby McEnough, uh, Adrian Mariapa, uh, Wes Morgan, Michael... Sorry, just get rid of that. Michael Hector. Um, 
And Gareth McCleary, I suppose, got the championship uh, playoff final to look forward to on Monday. But most of them have finished their season, so they could feature. And and, and uh, Whitmore's talked about uh, having his eye on, on Hector and Mariapa as two players in particular that he wants to bring in. Um, and then the American-based players, um, you know, it kind of remains to be seen because MLS, for example, they have got fixtures sandwiched in between the 25th and the 25th of June. You know, there are fixtures in MLS happening there. Uh, so the likes of Alves Powell and Andre Blake and, and Giles Barnes and, and, and Darren Mattox, um, I, I guess it's up to the clubs really to decide whether they want to release uh, those players or not. Some of them, I, I suppose, will want to keep hold of them for their, for, their, for their league fixtures and others might be cool with it, might be OK with, with um, letting them go and play for Jamaica um, in the Caribbean Cup. So we'll have to wait and see on that. I suspect, though, that, that the predominantly it will be local players uh, maybe a sprinkling of, of European-based and then some US-based um, as well. Um, in terms of key players, Corey Burke is, what I think, is one to look out for. The striker um, who made his debut, actually, for Jamaica against Haiti um, in 2018. Well, qualifying, scored his first international goal against Guyana in that Caribbean Cup qualifier. And he impressed in the US friendly. Uh, Owen, Gord Owen Gordon um, is another who impressed against Suriname. He's a winger. Uh, went up with Montego Bay United and he's had a stint at Indy 11 in the NASL as well. And then you've got, of course, the European-based players, the likes of Wes Morgan, the Premier League winner, Michael Hector, um, Adrian Mariapa always plays with a lot of passion um, when, he, when he's called up for the reggae boys. Um, so I think they'll have a, a, strong, uh, a strong squad. And as I say, Whitmore is called in a local training squad ahead of that friendly um, against Peru on the 13th of June. So they're going to be seeking their seventh title, but standing in their way will be French Guyana, uh, the, the, the country located in South America. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, there's been a lot of social unrest uh, going on in French Guyana uh, uh, recently. In March, uh, protests uh, were launched across the, the country um, and protests um, over poor social services, you know, health care, security, education, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and in the end, I think the French government um, settled it by giving a lot of money to them, to um, I think a couple of billion um, to, 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 to French Ghana uh, to try and sort it out. But it's, um, it's been a tough time for them. There's been a lot of protests. So maybe, you know, football could provide a bit of an escapism for, um, for French Guyanese people. Um, in terms of their Caribbean Cup pedigree, it's by no means the same as, as Jamaica. I mean, they qualified in 1995. Uh, when the tournament was held in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. Uh, they finished bottom of their group. They qualified in 2012, um, when actually they beat Jamaica 2-1 during that, during that tournament. It's a very bad tournament, that was for Jamaica. French Guiana um, qualified then, but never made it to, never kind of progressed to the final round. And in 2014, um, they, they made the CFU Uncast playoff when they were so close to qualifying for their first Gold Cup uh, back in 2015. They lost 4-3 on aggregate to Honduras. Um, but they will be at the Gold Cup this year, um, having, uh, having beaten Haiti in their final qualifier in November. Um, and that brings me on to their qualifying. I mean, kind of a mixed bag for French Guiana, their qualifying campaign. Um, they, lost, uh, to Hon to, to, sorry, they lost to Bermuda in their first game and then beat Cuba and went through to the second round. There they lost to the Dominican Republic and then they beat Bermuda in their rearranged fixture. And then they beat St. Kitts and Nevis and Haiti in Porto Prince in the final round. Um, I mean, it's quite interesting that they were playing kind of without a, a striker almost um, in their first few games. I mean, Gabriel Pegri played against uh, against Bermuda. And then Alex Eric um, played in the ensuing two games. And I think what really helped them was calling upon Arnold Abelinti, who scored a couple of goals. He came in for that rearranged game against Bermuda and, and he, he's had a good impact. And then uh, Sloan Privat as well. Uh, who plays in Ligue 1, um, he scored a hat-trick against Haiti. He's great for them when he's available, you know. And, and Jair Karam, the manager, he's been travelling around France, um, talking to different clubs, trying to persuade those clubs um, to let go of the, of, of, the, of the players that can go on to play for French Guiana. So he's gone to Brest for the goalkeeper Donovan Leon. He's gone to PSG Reserves uh, to talk about Kevin Ruman, uh, his availability. He's gone to Stade Rennais to, to, to talk to about um, Ludovic Val. Um, 
He's got to Guan Gong to talk about slow and pre bat So he's hoping that, that these players will be uh, available. I think the clubs are slightly fearful that the players could pick up an injury. That's that's the only snag. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the French Ghana used 28 players altogether throughout the Caribbean Cup qualifying campaign. 28 players, which is quite a lot, which shows, you know, that Karam has, has been experimenting Um only six of them of those twenty eight were actually born in in, in France. Um, so a lot of their players, you know, were, were actually uh, born and bred in, in French Guyana. Um, some of them, you know, played all six. Uh, Donovan Leon um, played played all six of the qualifiers. Uh, so did uh, Jean David Legrand, and also Rudy Evans, the left winger, um, who scored uh, three goals throughout qualifying. Uh, he's a very useful option for them in midfield. Plays domestically in French Guyana, and he made his debut actually nine years ago. Uh, so he's been part of the national setup um, for quite a long time. Um, so in terms of this semi-final, then Jamaica against French Guyana. My personal prediction is that Jamaica will edge this one. I think that um, their squad will probably be a little bit stronger on paper, and uh, you know they'll they'll be hungry to, to kind of pursue their their seventh Caribbean Cup title. I don't think it'll be an easy game. I really don't. I think it'll be quite tight. French Ghana have proved that they are indeed no pushovers. Um, but I think Jamaica will will, um, will will just edge this one and win overall and progress to the final. So uh, stay tuned for my, my, uh, my preview of Curaçao against Martinique in the second uh, part of my Caribbean Cup preview for Reggae Boys Commentary.